Hello everyone. This talk is about replicated subscriptions. And this is like, like how can we take the replication and push it to the next level? Um, let me first start to introduce myself. My name is Matteo Merli. I'm the CTO at Stream Native. I'm uh, one of the co-creators co of, of Apache Pulsar, and I also serve as the PMC chair for, for Pulsar. I am also a PMC member of Apache Bookkeeper. And uh, in the past, I've been at Splunk. I was one of the co-founders of Streamio, and uh, I, I've been several years at Yahoo when we started this journey of Pulsar. So just to give you an, an idea of how, how this talk is structured, the, I will first start with kind of like history of your replication in Pulsar and how we came to, 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 to design it in the way that it, it is today. Um, I will show different kinds of replication patterns, your replication patterns, how people are using your replication to solve their problems. And from there, uh, I will show why we, we need replicated subscriptions. And finally, I will do more a deep dive on how it does work internally. Is 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 a complex um, component, but I think it would be very interesting to to show how it works. Let's start with the history first. So. When we started uh, designing Pursar, we had your application was one of, one of the first thoughts there. And uh, we had a few constraints in the design and we made a few early decisions. Um, first of all, like it was, um, we needed to have a full mesh data replication across multiple clusters. So full mesh means that you can have producers and consumers on each and every cluster. And uh, if I'm a consumer, I should be able to see the ag aggregation of data across all the clusters. And similarly, I can have producers everywhere and consumers everywhere. The second point was the, to have the highest level of isolation between clusters. This is very important because we want to make sure that an outage in one region does not propagate to other regions. Um, and other regions will be able to keep, keep the data, but there shouldn't be, and then re-replicated when, when the connectivity and the cluster uh, come, 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 comes back online, but there shouldn't be any impact on the performance or the uh, functionality of the other clusters. Um, the third decision was that producers don't need to know where the data should, should be going. And uh, this is very important because it allows you to um, change the routing of the data and, for example, like adding more cluster or removing more cluster without having the producer to, to know it. So this runtime run co configuration uh, is, is, is important again because you want to, to have this, this flexibility of changing uh, very dynamically how, uh, how your cluster look, looks like. And this is a design decision where um, is essentially uh, heavily influenced by the first use, use cases that, that, that we had at, at Yahoo. And this is about the Sherpa database. Uh, so Sherpa was the implementation of a um, academic research paper that, that was published by Yahoo uh, 13 years ago now, which was, we, we, which was called Peanuts. And uh, essentially this is like an eventually consistent dat database with the global deployment to uh, many regions. It was like up to 14 regions at, at some point. And the key idea here is, is that you have local write and local reads. Um, and this database was modeled on the concept of having a durable and replicated log that would be used for uh, as write ahead log or and as a replication bus. Um, the interesting point of this system was that there were like thousands of database tables uh, supported by Sherpa, and uh, there were like millions of table shards. So each table could have uh, thousands of shards. Um, the, the, for Sherpa users, the interesting part here is that you always write locally and read locally, so um, you you have local latencies and very very low access. Uh, so each user, basically, the applications will uh, be able to serve um, very quickly users in different in different regions and the data then is replicated and and uh, merged together uh, in the background so once we 
move Sherpa to use Pulsar, basically uh, we add this Pulsar cluster uh, with duplication full mesh in all these data centers. So whenever there is a Sherpa, Sherpa, Sherpa instance, there will be a, a Pulsar instance and, and Pulsar will be charged of doing the right ahead log for the local um, durability, as well as the local replication across different storage units, as well as the um, replicating the data, data to the other, other regions. The, there was a, a, like a, we had before using POSA, we had ex, an existing systems here. Um, and, but the biggest win that we had by switching the old system to, to POSA was that instead of having a fixed set of, log, of logs, um, instead we, we moved to a, a world in which we have one topic, one POSA topic per each database shard. Um, this, allows a much more fine-grained control over the, the policies that can be applied to each table. Um, and for example, like if you have a geo-replication and you have an outage, you, you want to be able to prioritize some of the traffic uh, because you might have a um, limited bandwidth for replication. And this, if you have a single log that, that you are transferring from one place to, to another, then you have all, all, the, all the data is uh, multiplexing to that single log. In, instead, like having multiple logical logs, each topic per each shard, we, 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 we were able to say, apply policies that this table is more important. So we want to make sure that this table is, um, is, like, is a revenue, it's is, is directly tied to revenue. So we want to probably try the, 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 the replication for this table versus this other table, which is more like uh, some optimization or some analytics uh, use case. So we had this one topic per DB, which also uh, per, per DB, DB shards, which also influenced the design for, of, of Pulsar for supporting many topics. Uh, this is all coming from here. Um, and we can prioritize and configure different policies for each topic. So again, this is to show that the, um, this full mesh idea was coming to support this very complex use case. Now, in in the reality, not many companies has the need of building such uh, distributed databases uh, that spans the, uh, multiple continents. Uh, but, but many companies can take advantage of your replication for different ways. Uh, and in particular, the, 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 there are a few patterns that we have been identifying. So if you look, one of the uh, most common one is data aggregation. So you might have data that is generated into multiple regions, in multiple uh, uh, clusters and you, you, you're using the ingestion in the local cluster and you might do some processing even there in the, in the local cluster. And, uh, but at the same time, you want to have a, a global view of your data. You want to do a global processing, you know, maybe running some machine learning uh, on, on that data at different stages. So to do that, you have to aggregate your, 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 your data in, in, into uh, one main cluster. So you produce locally, you, you, so that you have this more higher availability and redundancy there, but then you ag aggregate all this data into a single cluster. And once you have this data into a single cluster, then you can apply your uh, either stream computing or batch computing processor. You run some com computation and then you write your results back into a database, for example, for, uh, for serving later. Um, this is one. The other one is to have some kind of like support for a disaster recovery. Um, so in this case, um, this is active active. Uh, it means that you might have a single data source and you have two POSA clusters. So one, uh, and on both POSA cluster, you're, you're, you're running your, your compute logic. And these are completely duplicated. So what you have in US East, you have the same in US West. So the same computation and the same result. Um, but you, have, you only have one single data source. So this is uh, kind of like duplicating the entire ingestion and processing uh, and, and the database uh, stack. And one of the advantages of this approach is that um, you can sustain outages in every part of the stack. So you can have a, a, a personal outage or you can have a flink outage, you can have a, a database outage and you can immediately switch to the other the, uh, region and you have the same result. And same, same you can 
switch a data source to publish in each cluster, irrespectively, and you don't have to worry about anything else. Um, the, the drawback for this approach is, is that you have to pay for the compute cost twice. So it's, of course, more expensive uh, if you have a lot of data and a lot of computation. Uh, and because you're doing the same thing twice, and you could you could spare that, uh, but having these two separated helps with uh, having two final results, uh, having redundancy at all the levels of all the stack. The conversely, like the different approach here would be the active passive. So active passive means that it's kind of the same. You have your replication across these two parts of cluster, but the processing is only active in one of the cluster. So the passive cluster, it is just there to receive the data with your replication and store it locally. And uh, but is the, the, the data is typically not used unless there is an outage and in, in which we can go on the from failover from US West to US East and then read the, the data out. Um, this way, you only pay, um, you replicate the data. So the data is in two regions. But the computation is it is only in one region, so you only pay once for it. So let's now see why do we need replicated subscriptions. Um, the thing that I left out from the previous diagram with the active pass is what do we do? How do we do a failure between the clusters? Uh, typically, this is some kind of like a exercise left for, for the reader, yes, you can fill over, uh, fine, but how? How do I, how can I restart my, say, pipeline on my consumers when I go to the other cluster? Um, if the process cluster in US West uh, is, 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 has a, has a cluster-wide outage, uh, sure, I can switch my data source very easily. I can maybe change DNS and uh, uh, the DNS endpoint, I, I can just like restart publishing on the on the US East cluster. I may have some more latency, but that is fine. But for on the consumption, I don't know where to read from. Um, the message IDs are not the same. Uh, the data, some data might be there, some data might not be there, and I really don't know where to start the to, to read from. Because of this. Uh, we have introduced this concept of replicated subscriptions. The design goals here were to keep the subscription state in sync within a sub-second time frame across multiple geographical regions. And we want to be able to safely do a failover when one cluster is down. Basically, we want to make this failover to be a trivial operation. Uh, it should be working like magic under the hood. So the idea is here is that yes, so when when uh, when when we have a cluster wide outage in the in US West, we switch our the data source to US East. That is fine, and I can also do the same for the co consumption side. I can switch my the, the, my consumer to cons either from the, they were consuming from US West. I can just like uh, point them to US East, and they should be able to. Uh, resume consuming from when they left off in the, in, in the US West. And then the, the whole thing can, can, can continue working uh, even though US West is completely gone. Sure, some data might be lost. The data that was in flight between US West and US East that didn't get replicated in time, that there'll be some small amount of the data loss when, when there is this cluster white outage. Also like the we want to make the simplest possible API here. So um, as a user, you just need to uh, declare your interest in using the replicated subscription by having a flag in the, in the, when you're creating a consumer. So you just add replicated subscription state true, and that thing will just work. Um, the question is, the it's a good idea. Uh, it seems very easy, but how does it work internally? And this is not so easy, but I will just walk down this path to, to show you how it works. Um, there are a few challenges, and uh, mainly that our full mesh replication makes it even more challenging uh, than, than what it would be with just two clusters. 
uh, the idea here is that we have we can, we, we can have two, three, or ten clusters of, of ports are with duplication, and we, we can have writers in each of uh, these regions. That means that having writers across uh, a, a global uh, set of cluster writers, yeah, across a global set of cluster means that there is no global total ordering of messages. So a consumer in the region in US West, a consumer in US East might see different order messages. Even though, of course, the per producer order, if it, it is respected, and if you are within a region, you also have total ordering there. So consumer A consumer B within the US West, they would see the same exact set of messages, order of messages. A consumer C in the US East might see a slightly different sequence because of how messages are, are published. So if you, if, you, if you do have producers in US West and, and the US East at the same time. Um, the other challenge here is that messages are generated independently. So when a message is replicated, it gets republished into the other regions and it gets assigned a new message ID. And there's no correlation today between these, those message IDs. Um, so if you have a message one, um, it might have like a message ID one in the cluster A, it might have message ID two in cluster B, message ID six in cluster C. Um, and we have no idea how to relate them. And also like, what, what is the, the ordering? So how do we solve this problem? Uh, the, the core idea of, of this feature is that we need to establish a relationship between message IDs in different cluster. So in particular, we need to be able to answer one simple question uh, that if you are a consumer and you are in cluster A, and you have consumed everything up to one message D, for example, message D1 in cluster A, then you, have, you must have consumed everything up to this other message, say message five in cluster B, with respect to cluster B, and message six in cluster C. So by establishing this relationship, say from message one in cluster A and message five in cluster B, once we know that you have consumed once you move to your, your uh, uh, cursor position after message one in cluster A, then we can advance in cluster B up to message five. The tricky part is, is how to get this relationship established. Um, the way we vision in this relationship, so first, like, so this is a, what do we see this relationship? So we have the, this concept of cursor snapshot. Um, Essentially, this is uh, the mapping that I was talking about. So we have a local message D. So yeah, I'm in cluster A. I have a message D, which is ledger ID 192, and entry ID is 123, 123. Um, and for this message D in cluster A, I, I'm associating different message Ds in the other, other clusters. So I have cluster B and cluster C. The, with the cluster B, the message D associated it would be one, two, three, four, and four, five, six, seven, seven, eight. And for cluster C, I have another message D. So this, this means this that if you have consumed up to this uh, 192, 123, 123 in cluster A, then it must mean that you have seen, if you go to cluster B, you will have seen everything up to this one, two, three, four, and four, five, six, seven, eight. The way we do this is to, um, we construct this snapshot is by flowing markers. We have the concept of um, special marker messages that are published and re replicated through the same data location path of the, the, the real data. Essentially, this is like a distributed RPC mechanism. Uh, we publish a request for as a marker message in the local topic. This marker gets replicated to the all the regions and then each region responds to this, this request by publishing uh, this response on the local topic and then it gets replicated back into the original cluster. Um, this is one such an example. Uh, we have an uh, example here with three cluster A, B, and C, as we uh, as said before, we have to construct a rep replicated, uh, replication snapshot. So cluster A will write in its, its own local topic, uh, a snapshot request that 
includes a UID and say I'm, uh, this is come from, from cluster A and it sends it to and re 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 replicate it to every other cluster. Uh, once you have, uh, once each cluster receives this uh, snapshot request, what they will do is that um, I will uh, re reply with a snapshot response. And the snapshot response will correlate with the same snapshot ID and will say that, um, okay, this, this is a response from cluster B and uh, my current message ID is uh, 1234 and entry ID is 45678. This is basically this message D. Basically, it is the message D of the marker that reached into cluster B. Essentially, we are um, writing back with uh, this is my latest uh, message D from cluster B perspective on this topic. And as for the source, the source will send the request and then we'll wait for all the responses to come back. So if you look at here as a, as a sequence diagram, you can see that uh, it is the same. Uh, and first cluster A sends the snapshot request in parallel to all the clusters. Each cluster will reply with its own message D. So B replies with the one, two, three, four, four, six, five, six, seven, eight. C replies with a different message D. And, uh, and then um, cluster A will have a message D of the last response, and that is like our local message ID. At this point, we can complete, complete uh, consider our snapshot completed, um, and we mark it. So we use the message IDs of the responses that each cluster gave, as well as the last message ID of the last re response to, to do our snapshot. Is that easy? Uh, Almost like that. There is just one uh, small complexity, additional additional complexity here, and uh, it is related to um, if we do, if we if we do have only two clusters in our replication, then it's fine. But if we have three or more clusters, we need to do two rounds of these request response, and the reason is that we want to capture between um, in the, in our snapshot also the messages that were exchanged by. B and C. So if I'm cluster A, I don't know exactly if anything was exchanged between B and C between this snapshot request and the responses. So to make sure that we capture everything, we take two rounds of this request response. And as our local message D, we take the last one of the second round. And but for the other clusters, we take the, the response for the first round. This is basically to establish a, a, a real barrier that we can make, make sure that we capture everything. So once we have this idea of uh, snapshot storage, the question is, where do we, where, where do we store the, 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 the snapshot? Uh, we, we chose to store it in the topic itself as a marker message. Again, it's a different type of marker message. And the reason it's a good idea to store it in the, in the topic itself is that we have, we take snapshot every uh, X amount of time, for example, every one second, this uh, per topic. And uh, it makes sense to store it there because you can, the broker will be able to automatically load while reading through a topic. So, and you only care about the snapshot where you are actually act actively consume, consume the data. So we can keep a cache of the latest and snapshots. And as, as long as the producer, as, as the broker scans through a topic, we'll be, we'll be able to naturally pull this snapshot into a, into a limited cache. And uh, this cache will be later used to decide where to advance the su subscriptions. And since this snapshot, it is, only valid between the concept of say, if you're in cluster A, this only valid on cluster A, this basically it is marked as no, not to be replicated. So it is written in topic, but it will it is uh, discarded for uh, before it gets replicated. The the next question here is, how do we advance to the remote subscription? So we say that we are able to. Um, create this snapshot, 
this snapshot establish a relationship between message ID in cluster A and message IDs in other clusters. Um, now we, we need to be able to decide when do we want to uh, update this subscriptions there. I, uh, typically, um, when the, the application will acknowledge messages, the subscription curse will move ahead. Say, if I'm consuming on cluster A, I receive messages, I acknowledge messages, my cursor will move forward. At this point in the broker, we'll be checking if this cursor, cursor position has crossed the message D that is associ associated with our replication snapshot. If it, that's the case, then we can say, since this message D is, uh, this, this, this snapshot is associated with these other messages, now we publish a message in, again, in my local topic, I will publish a um, replicated subscription update, a marker message that say that for subscription, my subscription, because each, each, of, each of one of them is independent, um, I want to update the, the cursor in cluster B to be advanced to one, two, three, four, and four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, and in cluster C to the other message D. Therefore, this Update request gets written into the local topic, it gets replicated everywhere, and each cluster will uh, apply this update and move the cursor forward. Um, that will, the, the net result is that the, the cursor in the other cluster will just lag in behind, say one or two, one or two seconds, be, uh, be, uh, be behind the, the, the cursor in cluster A. So, Tying everything together here, uh, we can say that the replication snapshots and markers are done for each topic and each region, and uh, we'll be doing these mechanisms of like uh, constructing a snapshot and waiting for the, for the for the reply. So cluster A will will do it, cluster B and C will do it the same thing again, and cluster A will will, will, will reply. So each topic has its own uh, snapshot that gets created every one second, so each topic and each region. So this mechanism is designed to work from, from having two clusters up to 100 clusters. And, um, and when you do a cluster fillover, the, the expectation here is that when you move your consumer from cluster A to cluster B because cluster A has failed, uh, you will be seeing uh, up to one second of duplicate messages which is typically accept, accept, acceptable in the presence of, uh, of a cluster-wide outage. And um, you can tune that um, this period of time by having by different trade-off. If, you, if you, you can tune it up by 10 seconds to have like less, less amount of snapshots being getting and market messages traffic, or you can tune it down to have a, a more aggressive um, um, uh, updates on the cursor. So wrapping up this, this feature, uh, so this uh, sub subscription really is a feature that, that is unique, unique to Pulsar. There are no other systems that I, I know of that are implementing this, and, but I believe that this is a very complex and important problem that gets solved by the, by the platform and is something that is not easily uh, done by an application. Uh, so it really makes cluster failover to be uh, trivial operation uh, and it couldn't be easy to use. So I would suggest everyone that uses your replication to give it a try and uh, give us feedback on, on how you, uh, and, and and maybe ideas on how you are going to use this. I will leave with one final note that at, at Stream Native, we are hiring. We are in, especially like if you like to work on this kind of like a, complex distributed system problems. We are, we are very uh, ha happy to, to, to talk with you. Uh, we have a lot of uh, interesting problems to solve and you can join, join the Pulsar team and, uh, we, and, and, and work with the characters of Pulsar. And these are very exciting and, and, and at a growth stage company. So uh, get in touch with me or just go on the careers page or just ping me on either on Slack or, or, or Twitter or LinkedIn. and. Uh, and uh, let's talk about it. So I will now try to. Do, uh, I'll be open on the on the Q and A. So don't don't be shy and ask me questions uh, uh, either live or again on 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 the Slack. Thank you.